So when you're using Next Image Component to load images in your Next.js app, if they are statically imported in Next.js, meaning that you're hosting them in your public folder together with your project, Next Image Component is going to automatically create a blurred data URL, which is acting as a placeholder when loading the original image, it just shows a blurred version as a placeholder until the image is loaded. Now, in this video, I want to show you how you can create blurred placeholder for your dynamic images, meaning images that are not statically imported into your components. They're not hosted locally in your Next.js app. They're coming remotely from a URL, a database, whatever that might be, but you want to also create that. Now, a little side note that Next image component is already optimizing your image loading. It's already automatically lazy loading the images. So this is not so much optimizing your images, but it's basically a better user experience in that instead of showing them a white space until the image is loaded, it just shows a very small blurred version of the image until the image loads. Now to show you, um, I have these images here, an example actually from the library we're going to use, which is place Holder, and I have throttled my network to be on a slower, uh, to simulate a slower network. And if I reload this page, uh, you might have catched that before the actual image loads, you see a blurred version of the image. It's just an, a, a very small base 64 version of the image instead of just seeing white blank spaces. Now, something to note that again is that with next image, you're not going to see layout shift because it, it's already accounting for the space that your image is supposed to uh, take. So you give it a width and a height if it is remotely, uh, it, if it's a remote image or if it's a dynamic image. And if it's a static import next image component, it's going to automatically read that metadata and have the width and height. Uh, it's just that instead of showing the blank white page, we want to do the placeholder. Most likely you knew this already, but let's just get into it. So going back to the docs for Next.js and for the image component, there's this section on the documentation where it talks about the placeholder. Now there are different uh, options that you can pass in for the placeholder. We're going to use the blur and then pass in the blur data URL. This is again a base64 version of your image, a small image that can be shown while the image, the actual image is loading behind the scene. Again, as a reminder, if your image is statically imported, as we're going to see in a second inside of our app, let me just uh, go to the home page. So here I have two images. One is this first one. Let me actually open up our application so we can see what we're working on. So we have two images. One is this is statically imported image from Onsplash. So I am hosting it in the public folder, as you can see here, public, I have this unsplash image. And in the first component, I'm using this statically imported image and passing it as a source to my image component. I set the placeholder to blur and the blur data URL is going to be automatically calculated um, by next image component because Next.js has access to this image at build time and it can figure out what the image is. Even the width and height is not necessary at this point. Uh, but the problem is, or the question is, how do we do the same thing when the image is, is remote or when we're dynamically loading images? So I'm also loading that same image from images that are on, on Splash from their CDN. And this time I'm using this dynamic image component that I have created which is basically rendering out an image component and using that URL as our source of a remote image. So as it is recommended inside the documentation, it's a bit small if I make this a bit bigger, they recommend using this placeholder package, which is the one that we're going to use to generate a base 64 version of our image. So if you go to the placeholder package, it's a package you can use in Node.js or Next.js in this case. And there's different ways or different kinds of images that you can create out of this or placeholders you can create out of this. If you're interested in the base64 because that's what the image component wants to so get read through this if it is something else that you're looking to create. You can also, as I mentioned, use it in Node.js. So getting started, we need to install the placeholder library. I've already installed it so you can go ahead and install the placeholder library. Now there's 
a Next.js specific plugin that you can also install. It's, let me just make this bigger. There you go. So there is this at placeholder for slash next. This is a Next.js specific plugin. You can install it. I've already done it. And once you have done that, you can just come in and import this with placeholder uh, function inside of your next config. So let me just also open that up. You can keep whatever config that you have in this example because I'm loading images from Unsplash. I have to pass it as a safe remote pattern for Next.js to be able to load these images. If you don't do this, you're going to get an error. And then I'm getting this function from the plugin that we just installed and get this function. You're going to pass your own config to this function which is going to extend your config and add the necessary config for placeholder to work. Now, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that this placeholder package only works with ESM modules. So your config needs to be .mjs instead of the common JS. And once you have done that, you can just go ahead and use placeholder just like you were doing before, which I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So. I've created a custom dynamic image component where I can receive the URL of the remote dynamic image, pass in some container classes, and then here is where I'm going to use the placeholder package to create the blur data URL or the base64 version of my image. So let's see what we're doing here. To my dynamic image component, I'm passing in a URL, an optional alt tag, and a container class, typing it as a strings. And then I've created this get image function where I pass the URL, and this is going to return a base64 and also some metadata about my image. So let's look into this get image function. Just so you know, I have put it inside of my lib. So I've created this get image.ts inside my library. I'm getting this get placeholder function from the placeholder, not the plugin, but the actual package. I pass in a source. This is the URL of your remote image. If we're going to fetch that, then we're going to get the response and create an array buffer from it. And then eventually a buffer from that. Once we have the buffer, we can pass it to get placeholder. This is the function we got from the package. Pass the buffer and the size to get the base64 and some metadata about our image. Now, this is going to be useful to also pass into your next image component because when the image is not statically imported or locally hosted in your Next.js app, you have to pass in a width and a height or pass the field property to fill the container or the parent container. But the package actually also gives you some metadata about the image, so you can also return this. So we can use it inside of our next image component. So what we're returning from this function is the placeholder. This placeholder is going to have a base64 property on it. It's an object with that base64 data. And then for image, we are just exporting source, height, and width. So we can use it inside of our dynamic image component. As you can see, I'm destructuring the image that contains the source width and height, and also the base64 out of the placeholder data that I got back out of the function. I'm including a wrapper div here, passing in a relative. In case you wanted it to use the field property on your image, you can pass a relative positioning to your container. So the image is going to fill the container and then you can set some sizes on the container. Uh, just as an option, I passed it here, some container classes. If you're using the CN, this is coming from Shad CN because the project is extended version of our next Shad CN template that we had on the channel. Videos in the description if you are interested into implementing Shad CN. But basically, this utils or this CN makes sure that you can merge your Tailwind classes together, running them through CLSX and Tailwind Merge to make sure that there is no clashes or overrides in your class names. And then I'm spreading the image, which again contains the source width and height. I'm getting the alt tag. I'm setting the placeholder to blur. And then I'm passing the base64 I got out of this get image function as the blur data URL so that this also works. Now, sizes is a property that you can use in your next image component from a high level. It just allows Next.js to load the proper version of your image. So for example, here, I am telling it to load different versions of the image depending on the size of the screen. 
because the way that I have them set up is that I know even in a big screen, they're not going to be more than a third of the viewport. So instead of loading a, an extra large image, which is going to be shown only in a third of the screen, I tell it to just load a smaller version of the image, which makes your images even load faster. So let me just also throttle the network here so we can see this in action. We are on the fast 3G, so let's reload this page together. Now on the left-hand side, this is the local version of our page. This is a statically imported. So let's empty cache and hard reload again. Okay, this is better. So as you can see, the local version is loading pretty much at the same time as the remote one is loading. So on the left-hand side, we have the local version, which is statically imported. And then the right-hand side is the one that we are using through the URL as a dynamic image. But for both, not only we are loading them using the next image component, which is preventing the cumulative layout shift by actually knowing the size or dedicating the size of your image to the DOM, but also creating this placeholder, which is going to give the user a better experience of seeing an image or a blurred version of the image instead of a blank white space. So that's a wrap for this video, folks. If you want me to create a video about the next image component itself, please let me know down in the comments. There is an older version of the next image component or a video on the channel where I walk through the next image component. Most of the APIs are the same. The import is a bit different and some of the syntax, but let me know nonetheless, if you wanna see an updated video on the next image component, there are some cool event listeners we can listen to show replacement or images on error when we're trying to load dynamic images and whatnot. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.